checked out with Doggy Dojo, and today we're going to have a special guest, as you've seen her before. It is... Inya! Special guest Inya! Woohoo! Hi! <laughs> so, we're going to teach you guys a really cool trick. It's going to be on a kind of a theme or a topic of teaching your dog uh, how to do a trick for certain behaviors um, that you may find undesirable. Um, we do this a lot with tricks like speaking, like the trick speak. If you have a dog that likes to bark a lot, one of the things to do is to actually teach him how to speak so you can control the barking behavior. So uh, this is kind of in a similar kind of theme in that area, and that is to actually teach your dog if you like to kind of chew your shoes or go after your shoes, how to touch your slippers. Hey, thanks for joining on here, Trisha. I appreciate you guys be, you being on here today. Uh, my name is Trevor Smith. I'm with Doggy Dojo. I do dog training in Austin, Texas. I've been training dogs since I was six years old. Um, we're on the Petscope TV. If you guys aren't familiar with this, if this is your first time here, welcome. It's so happy to see you guys on here. We have wonderful shows all week long, and we have a full schedule on our website um, on the Petscope TV. And then we also, um, if you want to, if you are one don't want to worry about the schedule too much want to be notified personally we can notify you personally by subscribing to our live stream so that's up to you guys and we'd love to see you guys um more um here on the petscope tv thanks everybody that's joining on here enya is rearing and ready to go and i hope you guys are too hey thanks for uh, the thumbs up as well we're gonna have some fun here in just a little bit if you have questions at all throughout the whole show please leave comments down below and i would love to answer your questions I'm real excited to be here. Hey, Monique, you got on here. I'm so excited to have you here as well. Thanks for being here, guys, and uh, we will get right to it. So once again, um, a behavior that some people have struggles with is their dogs chew up stuff that they don't want them to chew up. Let's just take one, for instance, is our shoes. Anybody have any problems with that? Your dog likes to go get your shoes. Um, well, sometimes the trick is actually teaching them to do it when you want them to do it so that when they decide to do it on their own, it's not as rewarding, so they'll be less likely to do it in the family. Yay for slipper season! <laughs> I know, winter's coming, so I thought, you know, we probably want to get our dogs fetching our slippers pretty, pretty soon, but also um, it's that time of year where we do a lot of hard work um, in our yards. I just got done doing some stuff in my yard, and sometimes you want to sit back, relax, and slip on some slippers. So, um, yeah, so socks are important too. Yeah, your dog likes to grab socks. So, in a future scope, I would like to teach you guys how to get your dog to put away your dirty laundry. So if you have, you know, whether you, <laughs> I can be very guilty of sometimes throwing my sock off onto the ground. It's not always the best thing to do, but it'd be nice if I had a dog that picked it up and put it in the, in the laundry bin for me. So that might be a future scope that we do pretty soon here. So putting away dirty laundry or helping you put away um, dirty clothes can be something we do on a future scope as well. Another scope I'd like to do eventually is how to get your dog to put away their own toys. That's a really fun trick to teach as well. So lots of fun tricks to do. Um, it's kind of I've been kind of building up doing these more fun tricks by teaching you guys the basics. Uh, we did cookies in the corner. With cookies in the corner, we uh, taught our dogs to go to a corner, grab something, and come back and get a cookie for it. And um, so that's what we've done in the, in the past. Um, and we also did uh, done um we're a toy in the corner so we've done that stuff so yeah there you go thanks trisha help that'd be helpful for me <laughs> we love if kaylee put his socks up yes um I'm the, I'm the guilty husband of not always putting my socks away and it gets me in trouble because i get holes in my socks so and this is we have a puppy and we're teaching her um how to properly um chew on certain things but sometimes dogs do chew things that they think are toys it's not their fault to that they don't understand that it's not a toy um, it's it's fluffy, it's made out of cloth, it looks like a toy to them, and it smells really good to dogs. Not to us. <laughs> we don't, Socks don't smell very good to us, neither do shoes all the time, but um, it's really nice to be able to teach your dog some tricks and have some fun. Hey, Trish, you're doing awesome. Thanks for all the thumbs up. I appreciate you that. So let's get started on the training, and we'll have some fun here. And you found yourself a bone. Got to trade it out here. I'm going to go ahead and take a step back. Our first step was to do the cookies in the corner like we talked about. That's where you throw a cookie in the corner, they get the cookie, and then they bring the cookie back to you and you give them a second cookie. So they learn the give and take, kind of go away from me, come back, go away from me, come back. Once your dog has learned how to do that, then you um, use a toy. So we're gonna take that step from there. We're gonna review the toy step. So I got myself a corner in my studio here. So we're going here. Oh, she loves the Batman. Ready, Mr. Batman? So we're gonna take Batman, we're going to throw it into the corner. And when she brings it back, yay! We're going to give her high praise and encouragement. As a review, we want to make sure to 
understand our dogs. Some dogs, like my Border Collie Daisy, she loves to play fetch. So me throwing this toy right away is very important. For some dogs, I actually find most dogs, when you throw the toy right away, sometimes it means that you don't want to. It signals to the dog that, hey, don't give this toy to me. You gross, I'm throwing it away again. And they won't want to bring it back. It's like, hey, if you don't want it, I'll keep it for myself and they'll run away with it. Um, so this game's really important to teach them that, hey, I kind of want it and I want to play with you with it. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So, But then, yeah, this whole time I was playing kind of tug with her down here. So that she kind of knows that when she when it's in my hands, it's very important. So again, in the corner. Yeah, good girl. And when she brings it back, I'm not, uh, let me uh, scoot up here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so in the corner, you can kind of see me here. When she brings it back, I'm not immediately grabbing for the toy. I'm going to pet her first. So if I pet her first, what's going to happen is going to teach her um, that bring it to me. I'm not always going to steal it from her. She loves this toy. She wants this toy in her mouth so very bad, as you can see. And um, I want her to know that when she brings it to me and to my space here, that she gets petted for it too. So that's really important concept of fetch. Understanding your dog and knowing what to do with this behavior. Okay, so thanks for joining here, guys. And then let me see. Hi again, everybody. Hey, Therese, good to see you here, too. All right, we're going to do. Let me know if you're having trouble with the stream. If anything's going wrong, I will adjust and try to make this work because if anything's messing up. But if everything's going good, just keep throwing those thumbs up from me. Show me that everything All right, this is. Hey, thank you. <laughs> thanks for Thumbs up. All right, so now we got our slipper. Yeah. So this is nice. Slipper, this kind of slipper here is kind of really nice because it's kind of squishy and soft and like cloth. It's a little easier for the dog. Um, sandals, not, not always so easy to start off with. Cloth slipper, are much easier to start off with when you do this game. So, hey, you ready for this? You ready for this? Let's see if she does it. So in the corner, she assumes it's a toy. Yay! Good job! So she's kind of bringing it away from me right here. So I'm going to go ahead and wait over here and see what she does. Yeah, see that? So now she's coming back over here. It's hard to see a little bit because the, the angle here. But she went away for a second, but she brought it back. Now, I'm not going to give her much time to chew on this toy because I really don't want to teach her or encourage her to chew this up. I, I just want her to bring it back to me. I'm not going to give her much time to do that. Yay, good job. Hey. Mm -hmm. oh, no. I switched side me, didn't I? I was over there. So that's another concept for you guys to understand too. So she keeps coming to this spot over here. So I'm moving my body over here where she keeps bringing the toy to just to make my training easier. So if you've ever had a dog that when you play fetch with them, they go and they catch the ball and they bring it to a tree in the backyard and they keep not to you. And then you throw it again and you get and they go back to that tree and not to you go to the tree so the dog brings it back to you. <laughs> so it happens, it's really funny how well that works, that you go to the spot they like to bring it to and return to where the home base is, I call it. The home base is like right here in this little space where I'm at right here. So I'm gonna toss it in the corner. Yeah, see she came straight to home base. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the camera down a little bit so you guys can see her, me and her a little bit more. Okay, you ready, you ready, you ready? You ready? Oh, maybe I'll put a little strength to it. Oh, get it! Yay! Woo! Good job! What a good job! All right. So first, you start with one slipper. The second step of this is to get a second slipper. A little bit more difficult because when they grab one, they're not always going to grab a second one. So we got to have both. She's a small dog; she can't grab both at the same time. So we're going to attempt to do both now. So I'm going to get one. I'm going to do one at a time still, but I'm going to give her, make her do it twice. Ready? Yay! Good job! What a good girl! You ready? You get that one. Alrighty! Good job! Yeah! Very nice! Good job! Alright, you gotta give it to me. I know it's hard. It's hard. You gotta give it to me. And that's nice about now is she's actually doing this. So I've got one step over here. Yeah! Good job! Good job! Out of curiosity, probably taking too many steps too quickly, I'm going to show you what happens with two slippers in the corner. Good job! Very nice! Good! Get that one here. Good job! You ready? And what I can do is ready to pick her up and say, hey, go get that one. Get that slipper. Ready? 
So see how that 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 actually is too confusing for her. She's like, what do you want from me? I already brought you slippers. What's that one? She's like, why? That one. She's like, I don't know what that is. So what we'll do is keep back with that previous step. That previous step of being, I have two slippers in my hand, but I only throw one at a time. And to the point where she gets really in the hand of just going to the corner and grabbing every slipper. Probably the easiest part will be was when I can actually add a verbal cue to this. When I can say, get my slippers or go get my shoes. And that way she can have an idea of what I want. So if I have one slipper in my hand and there's another one on the ground, I can say, go get my other slipper. And then, uh, then she'll actually start to learn to go get the other slipper. But what she'll learn over time, she needs a verbal cue first before I can really get that. So just to show you guys what would happen if you throw two slippers out, what, what most dogs will do. So when you're doing this, you don't get freaked out if your dog all of a sudden stops playing the slipper game. So, so first step would be one slipper at a time, okay? So start with that. Second step is to have two slippers at a time, but throwing one, letting him bring it back, and then throwing the other, letting him bring it back. Um, once you start getting that, you can probably add a verbal cue to it. The, all, the time you want to add verbal cue to any trick or any behavior is when, <laughs> thank you so much for saying that she's doing so great, is when, um, when you can predict and have consistency and predictability with the behavior that you're teaching them. So if you can't predict on a very high predictability or consistency that your dog will do what you're going to ask them to do, don't name it. Don't say, go get my slippers. Don't say, sit. Don't say, come. Don't do any of that. No verbal cues for that behavior because your dog will hear that verbal cue and accidentally sometimes not do the behavior that you want them to do. It's not bad if it happens once or twice, but if they, ha if they constantly have the pattern of behavior of not listening to that verbal cue and getting the, doing the wrong behavior, your dog will learn quickly to ignore or not to pay attention to that certain verbal cue. I know that's a lot to take in, but that's a really important, important, important concept to understand with any trick or behavior you're teaching. Okay. So thanks again for letting me watch that. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna throw this again. I think I'm gonna stick with step one because that seemed to be the best for now. Um, and then we're gonna wrap it up, have a really good session with her. And then I'm probably gonna go back to a toy because then she can keep that toy and play with it and tug on it and do what she loves to do, which is a terrier thing. She's kind of a terrier dog. She loves to tear rip and and have fun with it. So right now this is not necessarily as rewarding for her, but she's had so much success with other toys that it's actually been easy for her to do this behavior so um let me see if i can i wish i could see oh, i can't good all right i'm tracking the time making sure that we're doing good all right all right hey she's like okay i've been trying to find stuff over here while you've been talking and yapping okay you ready to play again there you go yay good job very nice good job do it one more time just for fun okay you ready here we go and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hold it ready Something to give your dog some excitement when you're playing fetch with them, no matter if it's a slipper or regular toy, is to hold them or strain them back. Toss it. Ready, set, get it. Yeah! Good job. Very nice. Good girl. Very good. All right, we're going to put that one up. We're going to bring out Batman right away. Here, Mr. Batman, and yeah. Yay! Good job. All right. And that one we can play tug with, which she really likes to do. She likes to play tug and have some fun with it. That one, she can not only do tug, but she can go ahead and keep that. For fun, we'll, we'll throw it one more time. She likes playing fetch. Ready? All right. Very nice. Very nice. Good job. That one you get to keep. All right. Good job. All right. So, so at the I, I that was a kind of short mini session, fun session um, for for puppies. Um, but when you get done with any training session, it's good to love and cuddle and play with your dog, whether that being with a toy, with your with petting them on the head or uh, just loving on them and showing them how much you appreciate them working with you. And for her, um, I reason I also check the time, is for short sessions for puppies. Dogs, in general, short sessions are better. Five, 10 minutes can be really good. Um, but if you go further than that, it gets a little bit harder for them to keep focus and get consistency behavior like we were talking about earlier, trying to add a verbal cue into it. So you gotta make sure to keep your sessions short and fun and at the end of them all, end with something fun. Petting on them, playing with a toy so they know that engaging you is fun. The other side of that, I've talked about this before, is that if you are having a great session teaching your dog a behavior, and all of a sudden you're done, you, you know, maybe you had a great five-minute downstay or 
um, the best slipper session ever, and then you tell them free and then walk away right away after the end of that, sometimes your dog's like, well, if I do good, if I do the behavior you want me to do, then you leave me. And that's not fun. <laughs> so that's we don't want to teach that. We want to teach them that, that if you have fun with me and you work with me, that you get to have meet my full and undivided attention afterwards too. <laughs> so, so that's another cool little concept that you guys can understand and, and work with your dogs and behavior. So I appreciate you guys for watching on here. If you have any questions about what we just learned, um, it's important. As you notice, we didn't use any food for that exercise. It depends on your dog. I would say that it's really hard to train this with food. It's possible. You can toss the slipper when they bring it back to you, give them a treat. It's very possible. It's not It's not improbable. So you can do that. A lot of times you see training down with treats and, and that's fine, but it's definitely possible. It's just... Um, and it's just not as, um, let's say, um, it depends on your dog. Like Enya, from the beginning we've had her, and it's something you guys can work with your dogs too. We've worked with her on switching back and forth between food and treat. I mean, treats and toys, treats and toys, treats and toys. So we'll give her some treats for sitting and stuff, and then we'll play the toy right away, and then we'll come back to treats. So she, she's learned how to go back and forth on food and treats. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. If you have food in your hand, and you bring out a toy, your dog's like, no, 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 you have food in your hand. I need that right now. That's a very, <laughs> yes, mine always wants food. Um, and so you have to sometimes combine it. Um, sometimes this is kind of going on a separate topic, but since you guys are here and having fun with me, I might as well, is you can get like a tennis ball or a Kong or something that you can um, do. Like with a tennis ball, you can cut a slit in it with a knife. Be careful, though. Um, <laughs> don't hurt yourself. <laughs> don't blame Petscope TV. <laughs> Be safe with your knives. Um, but cut a slit in it and then put some treats in there. And then when it has some treats in there that your dog can poke it with their nose and then pop a treat out. Maybe I'll show that in a future scope. That'd be fun, huh? How to get your dog, uh, your treat motivated dog to like toys more. Hey, that's maybe, th let's, let's talk about that in the future. Okay. So, um, that's one thing you can do just to kind of encourage your dog. Um, Kongs can do the kind of the same thing where you put some treats in there when they touch it with their nose and put their mouth on it you pop out and give them some treats we'll talk about that that's a really important thing because treats are great and food is great to teach your dog with dogs are really good with food um, people have problems and struggles with more um, getting their dog dogs like toys and toys are really great because I feel like that engages you with your dog more on a fun environment food is more um, a satisfying a need for their belly or <laughs> that they're hungry where toy is satisfying a need for interaction which is what we want with our dogs so uh, I like to kind of show you guys how to do that we'll work on that in the future how to get your dog to do um, to like, like things more than just food so toys touch verbal praise all that stuff so this timer goes here a little <laughs> yes please <laughs> be safe with your, your knife um, and if you don't think you can be safe with your knife find someone that can um, but anything anyway I <laughs> Um, yeah, I would love to do that. Yeah, we'll do that. So we'll we'll have some fun with that in a future scope, probably um, the next scope or two. Um, the the next one I'm going to do next week. Um, I'm trying to remember what I said, Therese. Um, yeah, so Therese, but we might um, we might switch it up. So um, let's go ahead and do that. I might go ahead and message you afterwards, Therese, and say, hey, we're going to go ahead and teach you guys how to get your dog to like toys. All right, let's do that. We'll, we'll figure out a nice title vault for that. So cool. Thanks, guys. This is why we love your comments. We really appreciate it. And we love you guys talking on here. Is that really this show, um, um, Tricked Out Doggy Dojo, and all the other shows here on the Petscope TV are for you guys. Uh, we love doing this. We love sharing our passions of training animals and training pets and helping pets out and doing what we do for our lives and with you guys. But that's the thing. is It's for you guys, and we love this. We love the show. We love you guys so much, and we uh, we would appreciate you guys any comments or anything or any suggestions of shows that you guys would like to see we'll, we'll, we'll get it we'll get there so um thanks again for watching as always check out the petscope tv um website three so you can put that link down below um uh, for the schedule um and then also uh, if you guys want to be notified here on facebook you can go ahead and subscribe we'll send you a notification every time we go live um, and uh, it, it's it's really great. We love our, sh our all of our broadcasters here. It's a, we have a great time. We have a lot of fun, and I hope you guys have fun too. Um, uh, as always, have some fun with your dog. As always, have some fun with your dog, and we'll see you guys next time. And thanks again for watching. All right, bye.